Pull up the book. Where did I did I leave off with uh, chapter three, or did I say we or did I finish with two point whatever I'm supposed to? Finish? Okay. What, oh, we started two point three, and I think it's uh, bad pictographs, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's finish that, and then we'll move into. I think we did, but I want to go over a couple a couple of more pictographs. Because those I like to put on the test because those are the things you see in the paper and the magazines and you need to be able to discern whether somebody's trying to be biased or not. I think we did the OIL barrel. I think we did that. I think that was the last one that I'm to perform from memory. Come on, come on up. There we go. Oh no, this is Math 110. Y'all want to learn Math 110 right quick? I thought I pulled up Math 120. Today must be one of those days that everything's going to go haywire. That's all right. We live in a society where I can blame someone. So who will I blame? I only got two people, the, the Russians and George Bush. So I guess I'll blame it on George W. Bush. There we go. Anything that I cannot do or anything that goes bad, I blame it on somebody else. And I want a trophy. Okay, we went over this. Make sure you understand this one. Oh, thank you. I'm pointing at figure 21 on page 102. And the correct representation is figure 22, which is the bar chart. That's a test question. That could be a test question. I really was looking for the pie. It may be in your homework. There's a pie chart somewhere that doesn't equal 100%. And I don't know if it's in your book. Okay, look at this one. No, we didn't go over this one. Um, what's the problem here? Yeah, in other words, they're all a half a block above each other or a block above each other. Okay? So, but 17, 17 times 3 is what? 41 or 51? So, you've got you've got a little bit of discrepancy. What about between what's the difference between 17 and 30? 13, what's the difference between 30 and 41? But they've given about the same amount. And also, 4130 is what? 71. 71 plus 17 is what? Huh? It's not 100, is it? So you need to have something there said other or miscellaneous to have the, see, or otherwise you've got a non, a non incomplete um, graph. You gotta look for things like that, especially when you're the presentee. There's a test question. This one is wrong because of proportions. You have to read the question because they don't put the and they don't put the quantity on here. Any graph or any pictograph, you need to have a quantity on it. You don't just put this and this and just say soccer participation. You gotta put some little note here that says 
equals blah, 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 equals blah, 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 or legend down here that says 1991 equals blah, 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 2007 equals blah, blah, blah. This is what? This is generic. This is says nothing. How many of you have been in a science class and the first thing they teach you about science is always label your graphs? You always label anything that you present. Sixth grade. Make sure a sixth grader can read it. Inauguration price tag, 3.6. What would be the only thing that you say would be wrong with this graph? I'm not answering the question. What? Um, yeah, exactly. There's no unit, so it's not labeled correctly. I know, but they don't know. Is that $33 per or is that $3.60? You know. Is it doesn't take into time consideration with is it inflation? Yeah. Well, it doesn't it does it do that, but that's not what I'm looking for. Both of those are correct. Yeah, that doesn't have a follow up in <laughs> doesn't over harder either. Oh god, they got something <laughs> in common. Wonder what that is in common. Sorry. Wonder what they have in common. Does anybody know what they have in common? What's your question? You mean frame? In what context? Picture frame? No, it's the same thing that just not And I mean, I'm not doing it. I'm just trying to figure out which one's Systematic would probably be it. Because you can't ever. That's a stupid question. Mark that one. Okay? I think they mean parameter. Yeah, but why? Why? And on uh, 1.3, they asked what is it? Mm. I guess. Okay, we'll get to that. That's that. We'll get to that after class. Don't do homework in class. Okay, what I'm looking for here is look at the perception or the depth perception of the bar graph. Why is that bar graph misleading? Well, Carter's is on 3.6, Obama's mm -hmm. is 49, and his is almost half as big as that. But you can't tell it really because the view is what? It's kind of like you're viewing it at an angle. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, what would be better in that in this in this context to turn it to where it looks more like what? Looks more like that. Do you see what I'm talking about? Look at the. I don't know what you call it. I'm not an art person. Okay. It's, it's not the correct dimension or the correct view. This needs to be more of its own on its side. See the way it's looking. It looks like these. It looks like those those whatever those things are bar charts. It looks like they're leaning forward, doesn't it? You were right, but it's not. It's supposed to be like three dimensional. Yeah. It's not the correct view. All of them look like they're short, don't they? That's that's what the error is there. So that's a test question because you know there's several different answers there. Oh well, I guess I can't find my find my pie chart. It might have been in a previous book. I don't know, but I remember seeing it. There's the OIL can barrel. Make sure you know the OIL barrels. And the soccer, because the soccer and the OIL barrels are the same proportion. At least this one does give you what? It gives you some numbers. And therefore, as, as far as pertaining to the soccer ball, it is a better pictograph because it gives you some numbers. It's not correct because you could fit like four of these in here, and four times eight is what? 32. And this is what? 726. So this barrel needs to be about a quarter of this size. Divide, somebody take uh, 726 divided by 7.5. It's 100, Hubert. Yeah, that's right. About 100. So th you need to be able to fit about 100 of these in this. See what I'm saying? Yes, Hubert. Thank you, class. 
All right, what's wrong with this one? Bars are nice. Good. Doesn't equal 100. Three and one is four. Five, six. That's only 70%. I guess that I guess they took that one out. I'm sorry, the bars are what? I heard the bars are what? Off? The 33 versus the 15? Yes. Because half of 30 is what? 15. So 15 needs to be half the size of that one. Is that what you're talking about? I mean, also like Yeah. Yeah, 11 is not a third of that. Convenience is not a part of statistics. So it's not proportional. It's not proportional. No. And it doesn't equal what? Uh -huh. Convenience, believe it or not, convenience is not accepted. So is this, does this detest that um, you could perhaps say No. Well, they're showing you because what do you, a lot of people, when you look at a pictograph, you assume it's what? That's why. Okay. You got to be, you got to be careful. And who knows this? Who knows that when you look at a pictograph, you just look at it, the news and the media. And I'm talking about news, media, any, any magazines, anything. Okay. If they want to be biased, they can be biased by giving you one of these. And what will you do? Okay. You just look at it. And that's it. Okay, so that's chapter two. Now let's move to chapter three. And that's where you're going to get into the math. 80% of your test is we starting right now. Now, for those of you that have an outline, pull it out. So you can see what's going to happen the next week or two, next week and a half, or whatever. Pull out the outline. Let me go to the outline. Oh, God, log me out. What a surprise. Can't wait for the day when everybody uses their email in class, and then they'll extend the log out time. But while I'm about the only one that does it, it's going to be a while. Math 120. I'm pulling this up because I have to show y'all how to use this several times because some people just don't get it. Tentative schedule. And I'm also doing it for the 120 online class too. So that's why I'm going over some things a little bit more than what I usually do. So. We have covered all of this material. We've covered all that. Golly, that says test number one. We only got five sections to cover. So when we get, when the, I'll color this a different color for y'all. When we get to 3.4, Everybody should be saying in their head, oh gosh, the homework is going to be due soon, and that means we got a test coming up soon. So whatever day I cover 3.4, guess what the next one's going to be? The next day, 3.5. And then after I cover 3.5, I usually leave one day of, of any questions on 3.5 or any questions on homework. Let's see, I got one, two, Three hundred years ago, right? Three students. How many else had four? Anybody else? Anybody else had me? Okay. What? Whatever. All right. These four students will tell you. They will verify because I'm very confident that I do not spring a test on you. I do not spring a deadline of homework on you. Okay, so you hammies out there, y'all chill, okay? When we get to 
When we get to 3.5, I will go over 3.5 material. Then I will say, no yawning, I saw that. Then I will say, okay, looks like, let's say today's Monday. Okay, today's Monday, January 1st. It looks like that Wednesday, January 3rd, we will be going over questions for the test and we will do the test. That's what I usually do on the last section when I finish. Okay. Then on that Wednesday, January 3rd, you all wonder why I'm using January 3rd, right? Because if I use today and next Wednesday, oh my gosh, I'll get 20 emails. You see we're having a test Wednesday? That's why. So Wednesday, January 3rd, I will pull up the test. We will go what? We will go over it. Now, will it be the same exact test that you get? No. For each question, I have 10 to 20 questions it can pull from. So, And then I randomize, and then I put in different order. So your number one may look like your number one, but it's totally different questions. Okay? Then I will go over the test. Then, after I go over the test, I will say I need to put what? A deadline on the test. And then if I put a deadline on the test, I need to put a deadline on the what? Okay, so when do I go over all that? I go over that after I go over 3.5, the test or 3.5. So right here, everybody needs to take a marker, and you need to mark this section. And I do it after that section, and I do it after this section, and I do it after this section. No, because I usually break this section up. I might do something different here. So you can generalize and say that whenever Hubert gets toward the end of a section, that means that we're going to have a test and the homework is going to turn it. Okay? Now, we covered 3.1, 3.2, 3.4, and 3.5. We skipped 3.3. So I need to see what 3.3 is. So I can say if we're going to skip it or not. Well, sometimes I change things. Okay? So 3.3. I'm just pulling up the book so I can go to 3.3. Okay. Measures of central. It should be. Nah, we don't need that. That's 301 stuff. Okay, so 3.1. Here we go. Measures of tendency. Now, if anybody asks you what measures of tendency is, what will you tell me? I'm waiting. If I had 120 before, you can tell me. Describe to me what measures of tendency is. No, that's not what I'm looking for. No, nope. good try. Hmm? Okay, you're using the word tendency, aren't you? You're using the word tendency. You're you're thinking of how many times something occurs. Yeah. Okay, you're supposed to be working with me here. Okay. Now she said average. That's correct. What did I tell you the definition of average is? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hubert, you went over that Monday. Yeah, I did. Huh? No, the definition. The number that represents zero what? Variance. or variation. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you something. And, of course, I think my, my department head said one of my evaluations said that I compared statistics to a uh, Axle on a bearing. And I do. They just were too shallow to figure it out. Okay? Um, axle and bearing. And plus, you learn something that your parents haven't taught you. I know. All right. That's the axle on a bearing. That's not what I want. There we go. No. Axle bearing bearing housing. Okay. 
Anything mechanical is pretty much set up with a bearing and a housing. Okay? Everybody agree with me? Think of your car. Your car has a bearing and a housing. I'm trying to find the right picture. Not finding it yet. It's in here somewhere. Ooh, that means that. Bear with me a minute. Some of y'all have no clue what I'm doing, so that's good. Some of you don't even know what a bearing is. Don't laugh loud in class. Well, I've been found it by now. There. We go. All right. Some of y'all that actually know what a bearing and bearing housing is, and a bearing and a rod or an axle, that's what they are. Now, I'm gonna pull up my handy dandy whiteboard. And I promise you that when I get through with this, you will say, oh, I see what he means. Unless you're shallow, and if you're shallow, then you can put it on my evaluation that I compare statistics to a barren and chaff. Well, where's my pictures? They didn't come up. Let me go with downloads. Okay, anybody have any idea where my pictures went? There they are. So, draw a picture. I want y'all to draw, all you artists out there, draw a picture of this barren and housing. You don't have to be perfectly correct. And then draw a picture of this barren and housing. Just omit the picture of the guy holding the bear and this versus this. What in this has to do, what in the world does this have to do with statistics? Well, one thing that you need for bearing an axe is it has to be a tight fit. Low tolerance. What does low tolerance and tight fit mean? That means when you put a bearing, the only thing holding a bearing onto an axle, it's not welded, it's not glued, What's holding that bearing on that? The low tolerance of metal versus the metal. So how do you put the bearing on them? You press it. Good. How do you know that? Tell me. I'm just curious. Huh? Okay. Good. You press it. Or for those that don't have a press, you take a BA hammer and a wooden block. Why use a wooden block? Because you never hit metal versus metal. Period. Take, a, take the axle, put it in a vise, or put it on the ground, let somebody hold it, and then you take the bearing, and then you put the, put the wooden, and you tap it on. The, the tolerance is so low that you're actually squeezing the bearing onto the rock. That gives you what? The tight fit. Well, why do you need the tight fit? Because if you don't have a tight fit, that thing is going to do RPMs and RPMs and RPMs. It's going to get heat. It's going to get heated. It's going to get hot. And if you don't have low tolerance, you're going to get the opposite of the tight fit, which is what? Flop. Think of it like this. Have you ever, okay, 
some of y'all like wearing these jeans that are like really, really tight. Okay? Now, the reason I say some of y'all is because I have to include everybody in that because some guys wear these jeans that look like they look good on girls. Okay? I'm sorry, but that's just it. So, huh? Yeah, and they look ridiculous. I'm sorry. But they look ridiculous. Anyway, don't they? I mean, I got a couple of people that I know, I don't say friends, because none of my friends only got acquaintances. They wear them, and they look stupid. They look really stupid. They look like those, those moms at the, at the uh, cheerleaders and the, and the uh, recital dances that dress like the, t the teenage daughters. That's what they look like. They look stupid. Anyway, slop and a tight fit. After you wear a piece of clothing several times, and some people, I'm not saying you're disgusting and you get dirty, okay? What I'm saying is, if you wear a pair of jeans once and you hang them back up and you wear them again and you wear them again and, and you hang them back up and you only go out to the store and come back and you wear them two or three times, are they as tight as they were when you took them out of the dryer? No. Guys, never put women's clothes in the dryer. <laughs> never. Okay? You do not do that. Why? Because women's clothes are made to shrink more. Okay? That's why. Okay? They shrink more than men's clothes. Oh, I know. I know that. And you keep the toilet seat down. And you never ask. You never answer the question, does this make me look fat? And will you ever remarry? You never ask us, look nice weather would have That's the three things of women. Okay? Now, tight. What happens to those jeans as you don't wash them and don't dry them? What happens to them? They get loose, right? Now, you can do this with any type of tight fit. The more it's used, the more what? The more it's going to get sloppy. All right? Now, a tight fit also is with numbers. When you're dealing with numbers and you're dealing with statistics, you want a tight fit. Why do you want a tight fit? Because if you want a tight fit with numbers, that means that the numbers are going to work what? Properly. Slots with a bearing and a... If you put on, and, and, and people say, well, Hubert, i got enough sense to know that that bearing don't fit on that axle or that rod. Well, that's what happens after you... If you take a bearing and it is too large and you have to, and you just take your fingers and just put it on a piece of metal or put it on a rod, is that proper? No, it's not proper. In about two days, whether it's been on what kind of machinery you're working with, you're going to have this. Blue jeans wearing two or three times. You're going to have that. All right? Now, what does this have to do with statistics? Well, in statistics, if you have a lot of slop, chances are you're going to be wrong in your conclusions. All right? You take that same pair of pants after you wear them and you throw them in the dryer with a we call those towelette things. Make them smell good. Make dirty clothes smell good. Guys use them all the time. All right? Throw them in there. And what do you get? You get the same tight pants that you had when you took them out of the dryer before. All right? You're doing the same thing as you would hanging them up. You're not washing them again. But you're getting the same tight fit. All right? This ain't going to work. Now... What in the world does this have to do with measures of tendency? Measures of tendency are based on two things. Tight fit or, or slot. What do you mean? Tight 
let's say you have a mean of 26, a median of 20, no, of 35, and a midpoint of 17. Versus a mean of 26, a, a standard deviation of 15. Mean of 26, median of 25, midpoint of 26.5, and a standard deviation of 2. Now you are a statistician, or you are an introduction to statistician, and you are doing your numbers, and you're doing two, two surveys, or do, you're doing two experiments or observa observations, and you come up with the following data. Measures of tendency dictate which one is which. Which one is your sloppy mess and which one is your tight fit. You're not supposed to be answering that now. The right is the tight fit. The right is the tight fit. Why? And now you know what measures of tendency is. Okay, now we're going to go through the mechanics of how to get this stuff. <clears throat> now you know, now, now you not only know what measures of tendency is, now you also know what a bearing and a axle is, and you also know what slop and a tight fit is. You ever hear a mechanic tell you that there's a lot of slop in your transmission? Well, that's different slop. There's two different definitions of slop. Anybody know what the first definition of slop is? What you feed pig. What you feed pig? <laughs> I, ain't got my, I don't think I have my pigs on Facebook, do I? Yeah, you do. Oh, yeah, you do. I do. But I have my pigs. I have to show y'all later. I'll show y'all later. Just show us that. Oh, yeah, might as well. Somebody's going to complain no matter what. Because what's one of Hubert's rules of life? There's always one. One. There's going to be one person in here that's going to complain about me no matter what. Let's see. Slop is what you feed a pig. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want slop. I don't know where my pigs are. They're my truck in the water. They're my pigs. There's one of them. That's the nursery. And then we've got the daycare. And then we got the pigs. Mamas. There's mamas. And there's the mamas in the mud puddle. The pond. And you know, people actually pay for this. They actually pay to put mud on their face and on their body. All you got to do is come on out to the farm and jump in the mud puddle. And thank you. I'll eat that every day. Hubert, you don't eat it? No, I'm not a pork person. Really? I'm 100% American beef. I'd rather have a hamburger, steak, or anything than anything. I'd rather have fish than pork. Fish or chicken and pork. I'm not a pork person. No, I sell them for money. All right. So, the slop that Miss Grant was talking about, 
is rust that accumulates in your radiator because of the water, because you don't use coolant, you use too much water in your system. That's why you get slop in your radiator. That's slop, like slop between pigs. Okay. But slop in your transmission, slop in your differential, means the gears, that's the second one. I saw that second yawn. All right. The slop in your gears should be what? A tight what? Fit. If it's got a lot of slop, what does that mean? You fix them to have to buy a new transmission or a new differential. Because can you fix a pair of jeans that you've split? Okay? No, you can't. Well, you have to actually go in and repair it, right? You can't throw it in the dryer and you can't wash them again. Okay? When you have a lot of slop and you've got slop beyond throwing in the dryer, you're going to have to what? You're going to have to repair it. Okay? <clears throat> this is what you want. When you do, when you do your survey and you tabulate your answers and you tabulate your numbers, and then you go through and you run the mean, median, mode, range, mid-range, varied, standard deviation. When you do all that, then you look at it and you tell whether you've done something right or you've done something wrong. Now, what makes this happen? Put something in there. What? Put something in there. Or have some false data. Outliers. The six foot second grader. The SAT that scored 2,100 points on the SAT that only goes up to 1,800. I'm being facetious there. All right. Name another, an outlier. Michael Jordan, outlier. Name another outlier. Bill Gates, outlier. The liberal that runs Facebook, outlier. Name another outlier. Name something that you know of or that you've seen on TV that just is out of the norm. <laughs> I would say that as far as physical, but as far as uh, musical also. She's got a voice that is just out of this world. Uh, you know who else has a voice like that and not, not many people give her credit? Can't think of her name. She's Hillary blonde. Clinton. She. <laughs> the lady on uh, the Voice, and she. That's a, she, she has a voice that is about three miles deep, and I'm not talking about octaves. I'm talking about just substance. And and I I never forget watching a movie with her in it. That what is it? Burlesque with Cher. That she has got a voice in her hand, and so does that what do you call it, Lady Gaga. She's got that same type voice. She ain't got what I call a cracker voice. You ever heard somebody with a cracker voice? They can sing only like three notes, and that's it. And they can't go very high because they don't have depth to their voice. Okay, I'll shut up. But anyway, outliers. Uh, that that's an outlier. Somebody that has a voice like that that just carries and just just got so much depth to it. That, that's an outlier. Not many people have those kind of voices. Um, I'm trying to think of somebody now besides Lady Gaga. So can y'all think of somebody? Right. I'm trying to think. I don't even know who that is. Right. I'll tell you somebody in country music that has that same type of same type of Patsy Klein hat, Reba McIntyre hat. That's it, pretty much. Um, the Judge hat. Because how many duets do you hear of that can just sing like the judge? Have you ever heard the judge sing a cappella? Oh my gosh, they sing better a cappella than a cappella. They sing better a cappella than they do with music. And have you ever heard somebody sing like that? Now, I'm, I'm singing is one of my loves, okay? But I'm trying, I'm trying to get this into your head that. Outliers are good, but sometimes with math they can be what? 
bad. Let me give you an example of where an outlier will really screw up the math. In physics, physics three, when I took Clem's on, I had a group and we were pretty good. We pretty much meshed. We didn't have any deadheads. Because by the time you get to physics three, you don't have any deadheads in the class. Everybody in there is at least a B or above. So I would probably be the deadhead because I didn't like physics that much, but I, I did as much as I could to make the B or C that I made in it. Anyway, we our last one of our last experiments that we had to do as a team in the lab was make a car out of a mouse trap. Okay? And all you could do is put four tires on. Okay? You had to make the mouse trap the engine. Alright? And we did it. We did it with a spool, a plastic spool, you know one of the plastic spools, the thread. You take the thread off of it, we use that. And we used a rubber band and we used a string. And we put the the we had to use uh, couple of pieces of metal or like a paper clip to divert the string over here so it would pull the pulley which was the and we put that to the tire and all that I wish I still had it but the but the physics teacher kept all the experiments as well I guess he burns them all over the place. but anyway at the end when you constructed it you had to run it 10 times or you had to run it 15 times and you had to throw out the outliers five outliers why because sometimes the wheel would fall off and it'd stop. Sometimes the sometimes one of the wheels would get crooked or whatever and it would veer off in the course. Sometimes the rubber band broke. Things like that. Now, if you didn't throw out the outliers, instead of the car going five and a half miles an hour, which it finally that was what the average I think it was five and a half or six and a half miles an hour. Then you would have what? It going three and a half miles an hour instead of five and a half miles an hour. You have to throw out outliers sometimes. Okay? So when you're looking at data, when you're looking at numbers, test scores, okay? Let's say you have a test or class that you took. And let's say that you made a 73, a 74, a 73, a 72, and a 51. What's wrong with that, those numbers? Excuse me. I don't know where that came from. There's no sneezing in class either. No coughing, no sneezing, no laughing out loud. All you can do is breathe. No yawning, that's it. No yawning either. All right? I think another one's coming. Um, what's wrong with those numbers? Well, either you had a hangover that day, you didn't study, or the test was invalid. Or it could be a combination of all three. But the whole point is, what is that 51 going to do to your CF? It's going to drop it down. And, that's, and, and it's not just important for statistics. It's for you to see how numbers really work. Okay? Some of y'all don't understand when the MyLab Plus spits out a D, y'all just don't understand. You don't understand that you had a 71 and a 72 and a 75 and then a 51. Okay? For some reason, you all don't understand that. But when it comes to money, if I give you, if you give me a $20 bill at Walmart, and I'm the cashier at Walmart, which I used to be before I went to Marine Corps, I went to cashier, I was working in sporting goods and automotive. If anybody ever works at Walmart, you know that was the problem for me, okay, back there. Anyway, uh, when people would give you change, or give you, and you gave me a $20 bill, and your your, your bill was $14, and I gave you $5 back. Hey, wait a minute. It takes you a nanosecond to, to know that I shortchanged you what? A dollar. But when it comes to your grade, you can't figure out why. Why? Because money is what? Important. And your grade sometimes is not. That's why. You gotta see how numbers work. All of you know how numbers work. But where is it as far as priority? Okay? So the outliers will do it. Let me show you an example right quick. And this is what I'm on some uh, I'm gonna do all of chapter three. No, I'm gonna do eighty percent of chapter three with this one problem. 
Okay, I'm not going to draw it out like they had it drawn out. And this is basically using the Excel spreadsheet. Now I have to throw out a disclaimer here. In Math 103 and Math 120, I use the Excel spreadsheet. I do not use it because you have to master the Excel spreadsheet in one semester in math. I do not use it because half of you don't know how to use it. Okay? I am not using it for you to use it. I am using it because that way I can fit everything on the board without me having to write because if I write, I won't get half of it on the board because I write to it. Okay? And then I'll have to erase this and now I have to go to another page and it's a whole lot easier because I'm doing it here. You see why I'm using it? Okay? I'm not using it because you have to use it. You don't have to do anything. All right? I'm going to show you how to do it by hand on the Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to show you, you're going to do it by hand at home, and I'm going to show you how to do it on your calculator. So that way you can't complain about it. All right, so I'm going to say X is equal to, I'm sorry, N is equal to 10 grades. You got 10 grades this semester. X. And let's say this is biology class because if I say you have 10 grades this semester, somebody from the online class or somebody from this class is going to email me and say, the syllabus only says four, but you said you had 10 grades in the class. That's why I got to say biology class, okay? So X is equal to, uh, let's say the first one you sucked at, 56, and then 72, 75, 88, 82, um, 67, 101, 98, what is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 92, and 77. Now, with any data, any data, what's the first thing you do to the data? Put it in order. So you take your handy dandy highlighter, go to data. And of course, you would do this in your head or do it on paper, however many numbers you have, and put it in order. So right now, everybody put them in order. This is You're doing this in your notes as we go along. Okay. And those of you taking my 103 this semester, we've already done this. So you can just go ahead and do it. That's why 103 and Math 120, when you take it together, it works out good the first two units. I'm going to go over here while y'all are writing. I'm going to put mean, median, mode, range, mid range. Mid range is the same as midpoint. Mid range, variance, and standard deviation. And I want you to fill out as much as you can from your whatever you know from probability. If you don't know squat, then you just sit there and meditate. Om. Masalama. You know what Masalama means? It means go in peace. That's what they taught us over in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> so if you don't know anything, just say, go in peace. We locked and loaded on a couple of Iraqis right outside of a place called Kenjar. They were coming out of their fighting hole, and they were holding a little handkerchief, and we locked and loaded on them because we didn't know what they were going to do. <laughs> I'll never forget this. I was at a corporal with me. And we locked and loaded on them, sitting there basically holding the rifle on them. And uh, they kept saying, my salama, my salama, American. And uh, we walked up to them and searched to make sure they wasn't booby trap or anything. Their AK-47s were rusted shut. Yeah. <laughs> they would have been better to use them as a hammer or an axe than a rifle. Took us a ball peen hammer and a chisel to get it un and the and the bullet, the AK-47 bullet in both of them was like rusted, welded to the bolt chamber. 
So we had to take a pair of pliers and actually, anyway, and they ate three MREs in one sitting. You know how many calories that is? 9,000 calories in one sitting. They were starving to death. So they couldn't go anywhere. They had mines in front of them and mines behind them. I don't know why I brought that up. Or what the, why did I bring that up? No, I don't have any of that stuff. One thing I've always found out about the military, the ones that are quiet, the ones that don't say they were in the military, the ones that don't say where they've been, those are the ones you got to watch out for. Those are the ones that are, have the most problems. The ones that advertise this and that and this and that, those are the ones that were in the supply tent back home in, in, in Camp Pendleton. Look, I insult her, she's leaving. <laughs> I'm Hubert. Nice to meet you, Hunter. I've really seen this stuff from the I know. Okay, so all of you know how to find the mean because you've been doing it since what, the sixth, seventh grade, finding your what? Your test average. So that's easy. What do you do? You add them all up and divide by what? Now, for those of you that need to know, when you're doing anything adding up, that's called uppercase sigma, right here. See that big funky looking E? That is the Greek letter sigma, or S, okay? And lowercase is a Greek letter, so that means it's a population parameter. Lowercase sigma is standard deviation for the population, all right? Uppercase sigma is used for formula purposes. It means add them all up. So we're going to add up all those numbers and divide by, sorry, add up all those numbers and divide by n. Now, for those of you, write this down. The summation of x and n is the same thing. Okay? All right, no, that's not that. The summation of x is equal to the total. All right? So if you added them all up, that's the same thing as the summation of x. And that comes out to be 80.8. .8. Now, you need to write that down and make sure you get 80.8. .8. Because if you've never averaged your grades up before, that's how you do it. I'm going to assume that 100% of y'all know how to do that. Median. Oh, also. Let me do this. X bar is also called, I meant the mean, is also called, let me do this, mean, it's also called X bar, 
X bar is a statistical, is a sample statistic. X bar is a letter, X, sample statistic. So if somebody puts up X bar on a presentation, you know it deals with the sample. The average age at Anderson campus is 28 years old. X bar is equal to 28. Mu is equal to 36. Mu is the Pendleton enrollment. What is the average age? That's the, that's the population. The sample is Anderson campus. Letter, statistic, Greek letter, um, population. It's also called, what else? Starts with A, average. And if the population is the Greek letter mu, M. Okay? And I'm going to put mu equals population and x bar equals sample. Now, if I say the average is 27, well, if I say the average or the mean is 27, I'm really not connecting it to a sample or a population. I'm connecting it to my class average. My class average is not a sample or a population. It's my test. Okay? So that would be average or mean. Okay? Median. When you think of the word median, let's do some psychoanalysis here. You know, you say a word and you think of another word. Dang old Plankton did it with SpongeBob when he had the cheeseburgers chasing after him or the Krabby Patties chasing after him. Bun, bun, tomato, tomato. Okay, so when I say median, what's the first thing you think of? The road, the interstate. What's in the middle of the interstate? Median. That's that grassy thing in between the lanes for those parents didn't teach you, okay? What about the concrete thing in the lane that you run over it bumps you? What is that? That's a median. Median means middle, okay? Now, the median is observed slash calculated. Really, it's not even calculated, but if you have an even even amount, you have to take the average of the middle two, and that's where the calculate comes from. If it wasn't for that one rule, it would just be observed. And I'm going to get to that when I get to the mid-range. Mid I'm going to talk about that, and you'll see why I'm talking about that being observed versus calculated. So a median is observed, and you got to remember if n is even, you got to take the average of the middle two. Okay? If n is even, take the average of the middle two. If n is odd, you just what? Find the middle. I think if you hit control, nope, that didn't work. Undo button is the best thing in the world. There's a there's a control and a button, there's all kind of Excel shortcuts, and one of them is control and parentheses, and you can take out rows and columns, but I can't remember, so I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, there we go. I'm going to take this one out. I'm making this where y'all can uh, take better notes, or I can do better notes up here. Hold on just a second. Let me fix this. Where's the wrap? Yeah. 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 
Middle two numbers. It was odd. It's not wrapping. Why isn't it wrapping? What? No, it's doing it right after it was done. Um, so it automatically wrap. There's something else you need to know here. Oh. Median is also 50th percentile and second quartile. So with that, let's go ahead and find the median. We got seven number, I mean ten numbers. So one, two, three, four. That makes these two We're gonna average them together. So that's equal to the first guy plus the second guy divided by two. What do you notice about the mean and the median so far? They're close together. So we got a tight fit and we got slot. We got a tight fit. So right now your numbers look good. That means that your that means that your test scores, even though they're not as high as you want them to be, they're what they're pretty much in line with each other. Do you see what I'm saying? You don't have anything messing it up. All right? Mode. Mode equals most. MO, MO shows up the most. Can you have more than one mode? Yes. You can have two modes, you can have three modes, you can have five modes. It depends on how many. Is the mode very important? No, not very. Okay, so I don't really, and it's also observed. It is not what? It is not calculated. So I'm going to put this as a different color because it's calculated. Oops, that's not the right thing. There you go. And the mode, do we have one? No. If you don't have a mode, you don't put zero. Do not put zero. You put nern. Is that how you spell it? Nern. Okay, y'all can laugh, okay? You know. Nary one. How about that? Nary. For those people that ain't from around here, none. <laughs> Not observed or not applicable. Does not exist. They ain't one. There is none. Do not put zero because some smart teacher will say zero is not even in the list. Okay? You know, there are smart aleck teachers out there. Y'all know that much. I'm not smart aleck when it comes to math. I'm smart aleck when it comes to excuses and stuff that I give you on handouts. I'm not smart aleck when it comes to breaking your test and stuff. You have no clue what you're doing. Don't you hate teachers like that? I don't do that. I don't even grade your test. Therefore, there's no impartiality. Range. Highest minus what? Good. That will be equal to this guy minus this guy. What's the mid-range? High plus the low divided by what? Divided by two.
Now, the range or the mid range, y'all remember in algebra when you talked about the midpoint of a line? Same thing. Okay? The mid range is equal to the calculated middle, like on a number line. All right, find the mid range on a number line. Find the middle using that formula of negative 5 and 5. What's negative 5 plus 5? 0 divided by 2 is? What's the middle between negative 5 and 5 on the number line? Okay. This will be used with your box plot. You're going to be doing a box plot toward the end of the unit. 3.5, I think, as a matter of fact. I think 3.4, 3.5. The midpoint is nothing but the middle of the number line you're using to plot your box plot on. Okay? And we'll get into that with box plot. But, And it's also important, not only with the box plot, it's also important for your frequency... I just had a brain bubble, I'm sorry. Frequency, distribution, mean, and standard deviation. That's going to be like in the next section we go over, I think. 3.2. Now for the variance. I'm just going to, you can look in your book for the variance, but I'm going to go to my handy dandy Google page and pull up variance and standard deviation. Standard deviation. I can write it, but I'm just going to do it this way. This is good enough. And some of you that have the uh, book, tell me what page it's on. But it should be in your book somewhere. If not, just write it down. Pull up the whiteboard. Give me a second. This one. This gets old. Did I not save that? Not download. Okay, I guess I'm just going crazy. What I tried, I tried that. Hold on a minute. I'm sorry. They've got this thing figured done differently. I know what happened. The Russians got into my computer and influenced my computer. That's what happened. What? What are y'all laughing about? They do everything. So whenever you're at work, where do you work, Miss Williams? Whenever something goes wrong, what do you do? Blame the Russians. All right, there you go.
write those. You don't have to write all four of them down. Just write down the uh, the ones on the left. I don't know why they're even okay. On the right, write down the one on the right. <laughs> The variance is on the top right. There. I better blow it up or somebody's going to say, I can't see, I can't see. I get so sick of hearing the Russians changed our election. The Russians changed our election. I don't know about y'all, but at 7 o'clock on election day, I wasn't stuffed into a van and told to vote for Hillary. And I don't think the Russians made Hillary put a server in her bathroom closet, did they? Maybe they held a gun for her. Maybe they did, but they didn't. Give them 40% off the yeah, yeah. Maybe the Russians did that when they sold, when her and Bill sold all that plutonium yeah. to Russia. But that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. That was nothing. Selling plutonium is our biggest thing. We're all practicing. Any y'all ever tried to do that? What would happen if I tried to sell one gram of plutonium to a Russian? What would happen? They would shoot my butt. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, kind of like all the victims. Yeah. But I'm going to get to the bottom of Trump talking to a Russian diplomat. Forget all that stuff Hillary did. I'm going to get to the bottom of him talking to them in the Oval Office. It's like, what evidence do you have? They have none. One of the guys, did y'all watch any of the things this morning? And I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna shut up. This is so this is so hilarious. The head of the CIA was on this morning in front of the judiciary, the, the Congress Judiciary Overwatch Committee, and one of the persons said, "Mr. So and So, did Donald Trump give away information in the Oval Office to the Russian diplomats?" And this is what. <laughs> This is what the CIA director said. If the reports are true in the Washington Post and the New York Times, then that would be a problem. Can you believe the CIA director of the United States of America just said, if the reports are true from the media, how scary is that? That's very scary. That means that if the media reports that you went out and robbed the bank, then the court of law needs to what? Take that into evidence. It's like, it's like is the sky blue? Hold on, let me Google that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. It just blows my mind. Well, according to Google, uh, it does look good. Blows my mind. I couldn't believe the CIA director said that. A simple no, I don't have the information. I need to get the information. What we'll suffice? <laughs> I cannot believe he said that. And then the next question, he said the same thing on another thing, on the Russian thing. In the If the reports are true, that's pretty scary. All right. Now, with the formula, I want you to look at the formula. Everybody look at the formula right now for the variance. And it says X minus what? X bar. What is X bar? The mean. So for each one of our X's, we're going to take away the mean. So I do it in a column. So right here, I'm going to highlight these two or three columns. There we go. I'm going to call this one X minus X bar. 
a minus a bar. I guess I'm dyslexic today. X minus X bar. And I'm going to put equals this number minus the mean. Now, if you are a Excel person, I'm going to hit F4 right now because that means it locks that mean in there. Because if not, it'd read this one and this one and this one and this one. I'm going to, now, if you're not an Excel person, just ignore what I just said. Okay. All right. I want you, with your handy-dandy calculator, I want you all to do that for every single one of those. So you will know what to do when you're at home. Okay? Now, a lot of you say, well, here, but I know how to do it on calculator. We're not using the calculator right now. We're using it by hand. So I want everybody to be able to go through and do it by hand, just in case you don't have a calculator the day of the test, right? And, and nobody has an extra one. Yeah. And if you lock that one, you can just copy it down and make sure your numbers coincide with my numbers. What I tell students to do is do the first number, the middle number, the 82, and then the last number. That way you make sure you get the same numbers. So it is the square root. We're going to get to that. Right now you're just subtracting. You're trying to get the cart before the horse. Loser. That's why you're going to fail the class. So the test is Wednesday. No, it's next Tuesday. Oh. No, it's January 3rd. Y'all catch sarcasm January 3rd. <laughs> When's the homework you? When's the homework you? I don't see what you did. I've gotten so many emails over the last week. When's the homework you? When's the homework you? When's the homework you? Did I get a response? Nope. My, my department head, why do you do this? I said, because they're supposed to read information that's given to them. If they're, if they're in a job and they're given a memo, what are they supposed to do? Just to read it. You may have grown up in a school that believes in participation. You may have grown up in a school that believes in social promotion. You may have grown up in a school that believes in telling you everything to do. But when you get out in the real world, it ain't like that. If you don't read a memo and you don't do the job, you get what? Fired, terminated, loser. Okay, you've lost. I call people say, "Look at it, she's losing." I'm kidding. Have a good day. The equivalent to losing in when you're a kid is getting fired when you're in the real world. Period. You get fired, you get fired, you lost. You can't whine, you can't cry your way back to it. <coughs> uh, unless it's a government job, unless you work for the VA. <laughs> Which I hope they get fired. Now, what does the next part say? After X minus X bar, what's that little thing in the top right hand corner say? I'm going to square it. So equals this number squared. So do the middle, the first, the middle, the last. To make sure you got it down. Make notes in your notebook on how to do it. Check against my numbers. What that does is it makes all the numbers positive. So that way it works in the formula. Now a lot of you people say, well, that don't make any sense. Well, what they did is they found the mean, or they thought about the mean. They, they drew a picture, you know, the graph that I drew? Well, I haven't done that yet. i got to do that. When I show you the definition of a mean, you'll understand how they come up with the number without a formula. Okay? And then they derive the formula from the picture that I'm going to show you. Mm-hmm. 
No, you just have to guess that number. <laughs> Where do you work on cars? I work. I do. I just do them. Oh, you just do it yourself? Yeah, I work at O'Reilly's. Which O'Reilly's? Uh, the shop table. Oh, okay. Down there with um, um, Charlotte? Charlotte? Charlene. Charlene, yeah. Oh, uh, she not she not work. She retired. She went to So she's up there with uh, Shelly. Mm -hmm. The reason I know all the girls that work there is because all the guys get fired. So I don't know their names very often. The only ones that stay are the women. And I go in there all the time and they know me because because they know not to ask me what kind of car it goes on. Because I'm always fixing tractors and stuff. Right. And I put car parts on tractors, you know, accessories like a switch or a light switch or whatever. Because you pay fifty dollars for a light switch with John Deere or Ford on it, but you can use the same light switch, generic, and it's only five bucks. So you want to hear something crazy? My no, I don't want to mom. talk to you. You're going to fail class. He has a 3020. Oh, uh, John Deere? Yeah. And uh, I called about getting a, uh, what is it, the next 340. Don't call Anderson. Oh, I did. Don't. Call Farnsworth. Well, uh, you know what I'm talking about? It's the... Three-point inch ram? Yeah, it's a top. The it ram. Can, yeah. You know how much they quoted me for an original? An original? Probably around 300 bucks. $400. Yep. I, said, I think I may have one. And I said, uh, you're kidding me. I said, these are the same ones you can get tax supply for like 50 bucks. I think so I, yeah, if you want one that's not an original, I said, but it'll work, right? Well, I yeah. think if you get you still need one. No, I got one now. Actually, a buddy of mine had one, an old one laying around it. Because it's a real narrow. It like, oh, this is old school. This is old 3020. Yeah. Metal, old big. Yeah, that's right. Well, you got an old one. That's I had an old. Uh, my dad had a thirty twenty, a forty twenty, and a twenty twenty. Because yeah. they got like a kind of hook, a weird hook thing. Yeah, it holds the ball. ball. Yeah. Yeah, I have. I think I have one in the shop. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. So if you ever need one, let me know. Yeah, my father. He might buy it though. Don't you? Yeah. Uh, hey, you good a deal at two fifty? Give me two hundred. <laughs> yeah. Give me two hundred. That'd be fine. Yeah. My dad had all John Deere's and Casey's, yeah. and um, all of our big, bigger tractors were John Deere's, 4430s, 5030s, and that's what we did all our harrow work with, and then the 2020s. 2020 was one of the best ones ever made, yeah. little front end loader, about know. 70 horsepower. I'm sorry, I'll show up. I like tractors too, so. No, that's yeah, it's nice. I mean, All right. It, it doesn't look nice when you're We gotta we gotta finish up here. All right, so now what do you do? Look at the formula. What do you do now? Nope, not yet. Total it. That BAE that BAE out in front. Okay? That BA sigma, you got to do something there. You've got to add them all up. So you add them all up, and you feel good about yourself. So you don't have to put smokestacks on your pickup truck. I don't feel good yet. You can do that. You can put ten thousand dollars worth of video and audio equipment in a thousand dollar car. You can do that. You can also put ten thousand dollars worth of wheels and and uh, uh, rims on your car, and it blow blow smoke, meaning the engine's bad. You can do that. Yeah, you can do that. Or you can paint your differential green. <laughs> because you don't feel good about yourself. That's usually what people do when they don't feel good about yourself. I mean, I'm saying it looks good. But you don't do it to a truck. No, but it looks good that when you drive it a lot, you have to go and have, um, it's not O2, it's something else. I know. I know. Like once a week, and I'm like, who has time to go? Have money. And money. Yeah, everybody in America likes to act like money's not an issue. Oh, yeah. You know, they'd be like, oh, I got the money I need. Thus, we have Sullivan's downtown. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I never forget.
and Sullivan's, and there was three people in there that were my daddy money. <laughs> but they're eating at Sullivan's. And I'm not talking about a $100 bill. I'm talking about money, money. Like $1,500 a year, $2,500 a year. But they got the money to go down to Sullivan's. That's why I don't go downtown. It just makes me want to pee. Go downtown one time and you'll, you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, now, what are you going to do with that number? Divide by what? Not two. Look at the formula. Now, a lot of you are saying, why is he saying look at the formula? Because the formula tells you what to do. Ten minus one is nine. So I'm going to take my handy-dandy formula over here, and I'm going to say equals parentheses. Well, I don't have to put parentheses. This number divided by... Yeah, I do. Parentheses, this number minus what? I'm Hubert. That's right, class. How'd you know that? I looked at my formula, Hubert. Check your variance. Variance, the important thing about the variance is that the square root, this is what you were thinking of, the square root of the variance Standard deviation. So do we have to do any work for the standard deviation? No. All we have to do is take that number above it and raise it to the what? One half power or 0.5 power. Make a note in your notebook. Raising something to the one half power or the 0.5 power is the same thing as taking the square root of it. A lot of people don't know that when they get to this class. Usually you find that out when you go to calculus one. Okay, unless you got a good algebra teacher like me, and I'll teach you an algebra. But usually not many people in math 120 know that, or 103. Okay? Raise it to the 0.5 power. And I got 14.2. Check, see what y'all get. Now, out of all the numbers that are important, that would be this number and this number. Standard deviation is very important. We're going to talk about that when y'all come back. But I'm going to show you something before we go. Let's see if I can do this. Let's see if I can do it. Nope. There we go. I'm supposed to do all of them. Oh, well. That one, nope. So much for that. Just give me a second now. I'm on. The reason I'm doing this, you don't have to write this down. Just watch. All right. Now, somebody tell me what y'all notice about the central tendencies. They're all what? The central tendencies are right here, right here, and right here. I'll go down here and let me write it. Mean is equal to this guy. The median is equal to this guy, and the midpoint is equal to this guy. 
what can you tell me about these three? So that means we've got a tight what? That means your numbers are pretty consistent. So let's throw a couple outliers in there. Let's say that you made a four on the first test because you suck. And you made 107. And on these three, 78, 77, 77, 77. What happened to your central tendencies? They're what? I, I heard. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> so they got a lot of wood in them. Slop. Outliers give you slop. Okay? Where consistent numbers give you tight feel. Now, I'm not expecting you to see that. What I'm, what I'm trying to get to, what I'm trying to get across to you, is that when you're doing statistics, you want to try to validate your numbers by having a tight fit. That's what I'm trying to get across to you. All right? I'm doing it with a test score, okay? Not all the time can you have your numbers on test scores coincide. But most of the time they are, if you're a C student, they're going to be between 70 and 100, right? If you're a B student, they're going to be between 80 and 100. Okay? You see what I'm talking about with the... And that's what happens when you're not... The numbers are not valid. Now, could this also be the teacher really sucks on giving exams? It could be because of that. You could have had you could have had substitute with these scores, and then the real teacher came in on the first one and the last one. Let's see, that might be a college class with a TA. That's happened to me before. The actual teacher, the professor, came in the first day or the first week of class. And the test was like that. The TA taught the rest of the semester, but the last final exam or the final test was the professor. And or he gave that test. The whole point is something's not what? Consistent. And that's what you need to learn from doing this material. And I guarantee you, some of you went through a 120 class and nobody ever told you that these three numbers are supposed to come out what? Decently close together. Okay? All right. Cut it off. Because we I don't want to go over anything else right now. All right? Class is over.